Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of the Learning Technologies 2024 one of the Women Talking About Learning podcast. I'm Andrew Jacobs. The annual Learning Technologies Conference and Exhibition has been running for 25 years now and I was there this year chairing and catching up with people in London. While I was there I really wanted to catch up with some of the talented women who I knew were going to be at the event and find out what they thought of the event, the conference, and the exhibition. Our first guest is Alice Thompson. Alice is a senior learning professional currently working at Marks & Spencer. She's passionate about designing training for performance, data-driven decision-making, measuring impact, and creating a continuous learning culture. Our second guest is Gail Watson. Gail is the founder of Sync Skills, and her and her team help trainers and training providers plan, design, and deliver engaging and impactful online professional learning. Our third guest is Sharon claffy Gluby. Sharon is an active promoter of women in learning and leadership and she supports an awareness of gender equity and an environment committed to a more inclusive future. We recorded this live at London Exo Exhibition Centre on the 18th of April and you'll hear what our guests thought of the event and give you some hints and tips if you want to speak or chair at conferences. You will also hear plenty of background noise since this was live, not in a studio. This is Women Talking About Learning. This is Alice, Gail and Sharon talking about Learning Technologies 2024. Hi, I'm Alice Thompson, learning partner for Marks and Spencers. I'm here at Learning Tech, um, I think just because I really value the kind of networking piece. Um, I just did a... Uh, a talk on kind of how you can move from tactical to strategic L&D and one of the things I started with was the things that I've learned and the things that I put into practice have been from my network and I've been really lucky to come across those people along my journey um, so I just think it's so valuable to make the connections and then kind of continue learning and think oh I might be doing not doing something wrong but could I explore something a little bit different and can I get a bit curious so it's just hearing people's perspectives which is great I think it was really good I think well judging from I think it had lots of head nods um, good questions afterwards as well um, I think it's challenging right because I purposely took a step back and tried to make it a bit more simple because sometimes I think you can sit and hear people's experiences and how they've done this in their in their workplace and they've partnered up with a certain provider and that's fantastic. But you sit there and you think, that's brilliant, where do I even start? So I think from the conversations I had afterwards, I wanted to give some simple ways that you could get started and the conversations afterwards, I think people really felt like they had taken that away. So it was good and I always have to caveat this isn't going to work for everyone and it depends on the type of training you're delivering or the type of organization you're in but if you I played a video at the start that just said you know if you open your mind up to a bit of wonder and a bit of curiosity and you try something out and it shifts the dial slightly then that's great um, so I just wanted to give people a chance to start on that track so you know how do we take some tools around performance consultancy see if it helps get us any closer to the root cause to help us design more for impact and I think that landed quite well I think what I bring to the table is just a bit of authenticity I'm quite <laughs> I'm just quite you know unapologetically myself and that wasn't something I had from the very start um, it's definitely been things that I've learned from the people that have helped me along the way and the, and the people that are mentoring me I mentioned to you earlier Danny Seals is a good um, contact of mine and has been mentoring me and there was a moment on his podcast where he was very open and honest about his um, you know battle with depression and it's he's always been someone that has been very unapologetically him and it's something that I've definitely learned along the way I remember my first experience at learning technologies I walked in and I thought how do I show up you know who should I be <laughs> and now it's so different just reflecting on these two days where I'm just like no I'm I am myself and and I, I do I know what I'm talking about but also who why does it matter if only two people in the room take something away you know because I believe in it and, and that means I've done a good job for two people so um, I think just that that authenticity piece is I think really important I think it feels I, I mean look I'm human so I think it always feels a little bit intimidating um, but you know, I've actually had some bad, bad experiences in the past public speaking where I've, I had um, someone in the crowd that I sort of finished my, my presentation and he sort of looked at me and put his hand up and said, 
so really you're just talking about the five whys and I said well yeah that's you know definitely bringing in the five whys but I'm talking about how you actually put this into practice with you know stakeholders that have a hundred other things on their minds and and how do you help get people into a space where they're willing for you to try something and see if it's shifting the dial and it's that building that longer term relationship piece I'm talking about that's a tool you know and it it just really it knocked my confidence and that voice was in my head coming into this event so um I definitely had that feeling in my mind but you know what I just thought I'm just gonna you know go for it and again if I get one of those challenging questions this time I'll know how to answer it (laughs) so um yeah it's definitely intimidating but I have to say um there's some really great like supportive women here in this conference and being part of the women in learning conversation was great you know yesterday I spent time with them and spoke about the session I was doing today and everyone's been so supportive so it's really and I invited them to the session and they showed up and they sat in the front row and encouraged me so I had that allyship there which was great briefly I went down and had a little look um yeah they so one of the talks was talking about up here in the conference was that there's over 470 different tech providers And when you go downstairs into that room, you feel it, (laughs) you know, and it's it's such it's a real sensory overload of walking around and seeing these big stands. And um, so it's a lot to take in. And I'm not sure, you know, you unless you're looking for something specific and you've done, you know, your research before, whether you'd be able to see through that noise. So uh, that's the one thing I would recommend to people when they come along is do your research before and then you'll find what you're looking for. Um, But what I love about it down in the exhibition is the area where they have kind of like the emerging technologies at the back. Um, There's like a line of of them sort of, I don't know what it's called, um, but anyway, new people to the market. And that's the, I went, I made a beeline for that because the others I know about. So I made a little beeline for it. Um, But, you know, it's good, I think, to to just walk around and, and kind of, stop and have the conversations with people and I went by easy generator it's one of the ones that you know we talked and um, it was less about the, the product and more about how do we basically you know unlock some of the challenges we've got in terms of great SMEs great um, people out there in the business and how are you using technology to help kind of scale out their knowledge and that was the conversation we were having and so that was great so this year it feels slightly different walking around speaking to people because they're more interested in gathering that data from me rather than like selling which was really interesting um so yeah it's it's a lot to take in so that would be my my recommendation do your research (laughs) so i would say that if just be if you're thinking about speaking if you've done your research and you believe in what you're saying and you've got a story to say and you have an opinion then come along and absolutely smash it and and share what your opinion is you are always going to have someone if if you're anyone you woman male you know black white any kind of you know um group that you would sort of associate yourself with if you have an opinion someone is gonna have an opposing opinion and they're gonna make themselves heard right so um i would just say just go in with that in mind but just believe in your own you know what i would say is i i think part of coming along to this stuff is not because like the one way of thinking is that you're right I think that going back to my networking thing is it's about actually what could I try differently and how can I continue to learn so do come in with that perspective but believe in what you're saying um, and put it out there and I think you know if you have that in mind then then you can't fail and and I think just be honest and authentic at at the start as well so you know stand up there and say look I'm not here to tell you how things are done I'm here to learn from you all and get that out on the table and then you're going to set yourself up on the right track so um, that would be my advice. Gail Delmas-Watson, I've been at Learning Technology for the past two days, Uh, it's been busy, I've been sharing yesterday and today I've been on the uh, on the exhibition floor Uh, trying to find a couple of exciting tech to work with. Uh, It's really fun to be here. Um, It's a great place to learn. And it's a great place to talk about things that we all love, which is learning and how digital can improve it. Shared an awesome woman-only session. Um, So the session was on uh, excellence in um, L&D operation. 
it was two case studies from two very different organizations. One was a brand new role with no budget, very short delivery time. The other one was from a much larger, much um, more mature organizations in terms of L&D. Uh, so some vastly different solutions, budget, scale, but some similarities as well, which is always interesting in the way that you tackle a project, um, develop the project, manage stakeholders, that was definitely a key learning. I really enjoyed the sessions. It, uh, it brought some really good conversations from the audience. And it's shone light on to the fact that a lot of what we do in LND is actually bringing people together and um, enabling them to define what they need. Um, and that's probably one of the key skills we need to do. It's not about the technology, it's not about the what, the how, it is about why. Compared to speaking, I guess it's easier because you've got a much short time on stage, but sharing is not about the time on stage. It's about making sure the speakers are ready, making sure they're comfortable with what's gonna to happen to them, that they're as relaxed as possible, which means that they're as prepared as possible, they know what's coming, they, uh, they feel in control. Um, so that is a key element of the chair, they're in the right place at the right time as well, that's, that's quite. But um, I do feel like it's always very good if I, we can connect and build a report because then on, st on stage we're all much more relaxed, um, much more connected, which relaxes as well the audience and probably prompt them. Well, they're not intimidated to ask questions um, and, and we want them to ask questions. We want them to add value to their work and feel like they got answers out of the conference. I don't think it's an issue at all or a challenge uh, here in this environment. It's a very safe environment, learning technology for women and I guess for anybody because inclusion is at the heart of um, learning technologies. We all have an imposter syndrome somewhere deep inside that's actually make you think, how on earth did I land that gig? Um, uh, why me? Uh, what value do I add? Um, you always have that voice in your head. Uh, whether we speak, I guess, or, or do other things. Uh, so we have to quiet down the voice. And interestingly, this year I found the voice was a little bit quieter than usual because, I guess, experience makes you feel a bit more at ease. And they had a great team of speakers. It can also work, also this year, learning technology add over at least half of the attendees were foreign or from you know not native English speakers which make me feel at ease because um, I feel like I was a little bit the voice of the attendees and, and yes that make me feel even more part of it um, the noise <laughs> uh, it is hectic down there there is a lot of exhibitors a lot of things happening a um, lot of fun things happening so it's hard if you not to get distracted if you're looking for something and I always looked for tools to practice in a safe environment in you know digital blended kind of learning experience but it's really hard not to um, get attracted by the stands that offer wine champagne popcorn teddies uh, so there is a lot of uh, of great things happening but also a lot of great conversations and um, definitely the exhibitors are are interested uh, in having you know chat understanding your challenges I would say almost a little bit more than usual um, that sometimes when you don't have a big corporate in the past then you could be fairly new ignored but Everybody I spoke to was lovely, trying to help, wanting to help. So it does definitely um, make me feel quite at ease, even if I really admire them because, oh my word, it is loud and chaotic down there. <laughs> I guess being a chair is making everybody at ease. Um, it's making sure 
as I said previously, the speakers are at ease, uh, but also the participants are at ease. And it, everybody liaises together, so it's some, you have to be comfortable communicating with people and managing nerves for others. So participants can be isolated if they first conference, so you want to bring them forward, give them a voice. The, ch the speakers can be anxious because it's always a bit daunting to be on a stage and share your experience. Um, so I would say, yeah, you have to be comfortable in the role. When you're on stage, actually, you've got very, fairly little to say. Uh, so just, you know, welcome participants, indicate what there is to indicate. Like, you know, are the speakers happy to have pictures taken from the slides? Um, you know, different rules of play. And then hand over, making sure the speakers got the best possible time. Um, we've got plenty of time to share the experience and connect sometimes if you've got multiple speakers summarize resume like you know facilitate really uh something but keeping it on the light touch sharon claffy kaliubi co-founder of hashtag women in learning we've been able to deliver a women in learning session during the lunchtime session for the last couple of years but for the first time this year we had a coffee catch-up afterwards it's also the second time that we were able to leverage uh, Candace Gardner's hashtag will pledge. And we brought in, due to um, Catherine McGaw, she was our other lead trailblazer, the concept of breaking into groups by theme. <clears throat> Everybody loved the concept of themed conversations. People were able to walk away with more actionable items. And uh, we had the support of the 30 under 30s taking notes, which hopefully we'll get a report from. We'll pull that information together. And they were able to report back. We then had other folks requesting that we do another lunch meetup, which I never thought would happen, pull together. We had two full tables for women and learning to just talk about how things are going, what they're up to. And we got this morning's keynote speaker to join us, both tables. And that, that blew me away. So, uh, yeah, it's been, I mean, you can tell by my voice, it's been very busy, but it's the most rewarding experience, um, other than when you did the podcast at Learning 2022 and getting the women to really, seeing the engagement go beyond the session time because the people in it want it, that to me is success. Um, really, really great question. We redesigned it from being a couple of years ago, even before that, from taking women in learning from a panel dialogue, which is phenomenal and always valuable, to one where we moved the panel down to the floor. So uh, starting last year, we had this be everyone's opportunity to have a voice and to speak about what they can do to make impact. The difference this year was having themes. And I think it really directed the conversation versus generally saying, hey, what's your pledge? Too broad. Um, and that was based on every year it gets better based on the lead trailblazers. And the nice thing is we don't lose trailblazers. So once a trailblazer always and many come, came back and I always feel virtual or phys physical in-person support for the event. And we had more allies this year, too. And I think um, that's just based on the growth of awareness that it was existing. So we also had food <laughs> at it. So I think that helped, um, you know, inspire some people to be able to make it in time versus having to grab something and then run back up. Well, you know, it was revealing when you were in one of your themes was, um, I don't know if it was finding your voice or having a voice. And I do think, um, similar to like an imposter syndrome, but many women, they know they don't have that voice, but I don't think they know how to get it. So um, finding the voice when you included everybody and you gave the instruction that you're in a breakout group and that you're going to really talk about a theme, they almost feel like there's permission. So I still think in the industry we need that. We, I don't think we found our voice yet. God help us, right? Because <laughs> we've screened, we've we've talked about great topics, but I think that could be another you know lever that will push things forward quite a bit. And having folks like yourself and seeing having the keynote speaker sit, and he was unaware of a lot of things that the women were sharing, and in a really positive, productive way. 
that's part of the voice um, and it's doing it the right way we can't do it with anger and confrontation I think we can learn a lot from each other and as we've always shared allies and men have been great elevators for women in business and women in learning um, so we had one topic the rise of women does not mean the fall of men or other women so I think that's important but the, the voice is still there yet to be found exhibition was great we don't have stuff like that to this level in the US maybe Dev Learn, but that's a whole different tribe we did get feedback and you did see there's still that crazy booth babe mentality so not many women were um, the leaders there the C-suite there they were the worker bees um, and and that's great but then there was a few costumes and a few areas where it just it felt very 80s in that sense so um, I think as the industry we need the vendors as well as the practitioners to be moving up and really identifying as as a group how we want to be represented I would say uh, one get in the LinkedIn group hashtag women in learning or search for hashtag women in learning or hashtag will pledge there was another one if you're under 30 please consider applying for 30 under 30 programs it's phenomenal men and women um, reaching out to the individuals if you see us on LinkedIn social media drops for women this was something Carrie Sharples did a research on from the UK we're not that present and there's a reason like there's things that can happen if you don't present the right way or the way that is acceptable however it doesn't prevent you from private messaging I'm always available but I know plenty of other women the other thing to know is this is an initiative and it shouldn't be owned by any company or person. So any of the presentations I've ever done, I've shared. If you have an affinity group, if you want to get involved and you want to get up to speed, um, you've been around where we used to spend 10 minutes on the stats, and the stats really aren't moving drastically, and we don't need to waste time. We need to get into action mode. So reach out. I'm always available. There's so many other people that you'll read about. I did not meet one woman in learning from here or the states that wouldn't welcome a conversation and we had one theme was the domino effect of networking and i really think it goes further than you could imagine i think it's this is the year that it really exploded oh god um that we get on the main stage <laughs> um that it's not i mean i never want to knock the fact that this is a conference that's given great space support and energy by men and women for women in learning i'll never i'll never look that back and, and lunchtime has been great i think there was a big request this year more than i've ever seen for the follow-ups we never did and and that's by men's support don taylor's been great nigel payne's been mentoring people there's so much engagement and then to have it be requested by the women and to get it. Mandy was great at working. I know Catherine wanted to do it. So it really, the women put in a ton of work before we got here. And I'd pray for that again next year. We started talking maybe two months, if not longer. Weekly, we invited as many people. That's never been done. And you actually gave great advice in Orlando to make it, allow it to make sense for the people on the floor to be able to kick off sooner. So we used, we used media. And I think that was really engaging. Um, I had a woman come up and say she was brought to tears by the first five minutes. So clearly things have happened in her life. And if it helped one person, that's all that matters. It was so fantastic to get time to speak with our three speakers and chairs at the event. We're often engaged in sessions, but understanding what's really going through someone's head at a large event like this can be really, really insightful. A massive thank you to Alice, Gail and Sharon for giving up some of their time for the recording. You'll find all their contact details in the show notes. Please do make sure you like and subscribe to the podcast in your podcast player. It really does make a difference to help people find us. And feel free to make a donation to the podcast if you want to help keep the lights on. Details again are in the show notes. We'll be back next time with the learning design one. As always, Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again soon.